Butch Jones, fired from the University of Tennessee. So I have a list of replacements for you all that maybe you should just think about. And I won't preface this discussion with the fact that uh, the first two are a little bit of a wild card, okay? The, part of the wild card category here in my ranking. So if you go, what, who? Just, you know, bear with me here. All right, we're having a little fun with this. So let's get to number five here. Kyle Whittingham, head coach of Utah. I, look, I even put in the graphic. Make no mistake, he is a wild card. Now, before I get into Whittingham here, the whole situation with Butch Jones is obviously tough, but he wasn't the worst coach in college football history. He actually had a decent record with his history at Tennessee, but when you want to look at the SEC and how much pressure there is on coaches to actually perform, and with the blowout loss to Missouri 50-17, to with a team that, by the way, had their own coach on the hot seat for some time, it was time for Tennessee to go, or time for Butch Jones to go. And so, at, in the grand scheme of things, Butch was not that disappointing. He was, although, disappointing in the fact that Tennessee couldn't take that next step, right? They could not be a Mississippi State. They could not be an Alabama. And that was the problem with Butch Jones, who eventually they decided to fire him. Now, the Volunteers' next coach will be Tennessee's fifth head coach in the past 11 years. So that was after Tennessee only had two within 32 years. So all of a sudden, a lot of turnover here going on with the Volunteers. And one final point about Butch Jones, the recruiting. That was one of the problems that uh, I really took out of this. So CBSSports.com did a really good article in terms of the recruiting by Butch Jones in 2013, 2014, 2015. And in 10 players that were ranked inside the top 100 in recruiting by 24-7 sports, Jones hit on three of those best-case scenarios. So that's a 30% rate there. Nick Saban, meanwhile, with 32 players within that top 100 in those three years, he hit on 60%. So obviously the recruiting success was not there, was not up to snuff for Butch Jones. So that was really his undoing. So to the replacements here, Kyle Whittingham, he's actually had a fantastic run with Utah, has been a stalwart with that program dating back a long time to 2004 when Utah was in the Mountain West and eventually moved on to the Pac-12 in 2011. You look at the recent performances, overall records, 9-4 in 2016, 10-3 in 2015. Uh, it was a conference division title for them in the South. So obviously good history. Now the only problem is that Whittingham doesn't have a lot of ties to the Tennessee area, so that's why he's a bit of a wild card. He's a bit of an underdog compared to some of these other coaches. But 109 and 55 career coaching record. Whittingham is a guy we should actually kind of monitor here. He's not going to be as highly pursued as, say, you know, a big headliner like a John Gruden, but still a name that we can kind of look out for that perhaps may get some interviews from other teams. Who knows? Uh, and I'm hearing Gary Patterson is another name that perhaps could be a wild card in this coaching hunt. I don't have him on my list, but I do have Whittingham here because he is clearly a winner. And although Utah is just having an okay season right now, 5-5, five and five, I still really like the resume that Whittingham has. I like the experience and three bowl game appearances the last three years. Las Vegas Bowl twice, Foster Farms last year. And so... Whittingham is a name that perhaps we should monitor going forward. So there you go. He's at number five. How about number four? Again, another wild card. Greg Schiano, defensive coordinator for the Ohio State Buckeyes. He's a smart, no-nonsense coach. I understand it was a debacle in Tampa Bay. But look past that and go to his performance at Rutgers. And Rutgers was a, basically a program that was down in the dumps. So when Greg Schiano first went to Rutgers, 2001, 2-9 overall record, 0-7 in conference. And this is the Big East Conference. Uh, and so they're, of course, in the Big Ten now. But 2002, 0-7 in conference. 2003, 2-5. You jump ahead to 2008, 5-2, 9-4 overall record in 2011. So Greg Schiano, you could argue was a big reason why Rutgers turned around their program. And yeah, I understand now they're in the Big Ten and they're kind of a laughing stock, although they beat my Maryland Terrapins recently. Greg Schiano has been learning underneath Urban Meyer the past uh, recency, 
And that obviously cannot be understated because Urban Meyer, one of the best college football coaches right now, if not the best outside of Nick Saban. And so you can account for that. And Greg Schiano's experience, his coaching experience. I mean, you look from 2005 to 2011 at Rutgers, only missed one bowl game appearance. And in the ones that Rutgers actually made, they won six of them, or five of them, I should say. They lost one. So obviously, Greg Schiano knows what it takes to create college football success. And I think he would be an interesting play in Tennessee. Now, again, obviously, he's probably happy with what he's doing right now in Ohio State, you know, working underneath Urban Meyer. But you can't look past the fact that this guy is used to being a head football coach in college. Maybe he's working his way for that opportunity yet again. And I'm not hearing that Florida is highly pursuing this guy, so I think maybe Tennessee could really take a good look at Shiano and say, all right, maybe this is our guy. And again, please look past Tampa Bay because that was a debacle and Tampa Bay had an awful roster and that was just a mess. But Greg Shiano, I think, is a really intelligent guy. He's an X's and O's guy. Obviously, he could change the culture of Tennessee if he needs to. I still think the Volunteers play hard. Uh, just Butch Jones has failed the recruiting and all that. I think Greg Shiano would be a much better recruiting guy and he can kind of bring that experience from Ohio to Tennessee and lure some Ohio players over to Tennessee, maybe it could go down. So Greg Schiano there at number four. <clears throat> How about number three now? Dan Mullen, he's a name that has been thrown out there in the Florida circles. So obviously he's going to be highly recruited by the Gators organization, program, etc. So obviously something to monitor. But Dan Mullen, what can you say about him? Obviously, Mississippi State, a team that has been in a rough situation being in the SEC West and playing against the likes of LSU and Alabama, etc. Only two losing seasons, though, in eight years, which I think is very, very impressive. 68 and 45 in his coaching career. Has been coaching Mississippi State since 2009. And you look at the past seasons, he's made every bowl game coaching for Mississippi State all the way, looking back to 2009, that's when the last time he did not take Mississippi State to uh, a bowl game. So with that, you know, used to success with this program. Offensive mindset is fantastic, and I think that would translate well into Tennessee. Obviously has a great recruiting background. So, and I put this at the final point in my graphic here, great way to escape the SEC West. What do I mean by that? You can get out of Alabama's hair. You can get out of LSU's hair. You can get away from all that, and you can dominate in the SEC East, eventually maybe, and then play in Alabama or in Auburn, et cetera, in the SEC championship game. So I think it's an opportunity for Dan Mullen to get out of there because Mississippi State has kind of played little brother to Alabama and Auburn sometimes too. So Dan Mullen could go over to the East, play, play against much worse competition, in Missouri, in Vanderbilt, et cetera. And Mullen has an opportunity to be a legit coach in the SEC East. I think this is an opportunity for him that he may not be able to pass up. Again, there is a rival in the SEC East that is highly going after Dan Mullen too in Florida. So it might come down to money, who knows? Obviously, you know, there's a buyout option with Butch Jones and all that, but uh, at MS MSU, Dan Mullen is currently making around four and a half million. And you would think that the Volunteers could and would pay more than that. 68 and 45 in his career at Mississippi State. And really, you look, past to, you look back to that recent game against Alabama, they gave the Crimson Tide all they could handle in Starkville. So obviously something to build upon with that. Mississippi State really had an opportunity to win that game at some points, kind of run away with it uh, when they had the lead at one point, but still... Despite the loss, obviously impressive that you compete with the Crimson Tide in the way in which they're playing football right now. And I think he deserves better, folks. I do. I think he deserves better than the SEC West and kind of being below those teams in Auburn and Alabama right now. So obviously Dan Mullen is going to be highly sought after. So I, I see him going to a Florida or Tennessee. I think it's going to come down to those two opportunities. Definitely not a Nebraska or anything like that with Mike Riley probably getting fired too. But... With that, Dan Mullen falling in at number three. Getting into the crux here of my rankings, number two, a TV analyst right now, Chip Kelly, former NFL coach, former college football coach as well, most notably Oregon with his fantastic 
record that he has there. So Chip Kelly is chilling right now, folks. He's, you know, just analyzing football, getting paid to do it. But you look at the entire body of work that he has done in his career, he has so much coaching experience. It's hard for me to believe that Chip Kelly is ready to kind of hang it up in terms of his coaching tenure in college football. Last time he coached, Oregon, 2012, of course. And really fantastic performances for those Ducks. So you look at 2012, overall record, 12-1. and one. Uh, Tied for first at the North in, in the Pac-12. 2011, 12 and 2, tied for tied for first in the North again. 2010, 12 and 2. These are overall records. And then finally, you have to go back to 2009 for the first time that he lost more than one game at Oregon, 10 and 3 still. Uh, and we're of course incorporating bowl games and all that. So obviously, Chip Kelly is an analyst right now. He's employed by ESPN, but everybody has a price. And I have this question here at the bottom, and folks, maybe you want to weigh in in the comments section because we are completely live. We'll throw up the comments as we see fit. Does Chip actually want to come back to college football? That's what it all comes down to, and that question will remain the same for the next potential coach that I get to at my number one replacement. But does he still have that hunger, that itch, that Brett Favre moment, if you will? Yes, I want to come back to coaching. Yes, I want to bring back a winning program to the Tennessee Volunteers. With so much pressure going on in that program, does Chip Kelly want to be underneath all of that? So we do have a weigh-in for you folks at home. Feel free to throw in your comments. Does Chip Kelly want to come back? It's a legit question, because I don't know. May, may, many people wonder, did Jay Cutler want to go back to football? Was he just enjoying life and broadcasting? Obviously, he wanted to come back. He had a price. Adam Gaze gave him that price, and boom, he came back. And uh, now he's the quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. But there's the other side of the spectrum, right? Tony Romo. You know, people were saying, oh, maybe he wants to come back. Maybe he'll have that itch. Clearly not. He's enjoying his life broadcasting with Jim Nance for CBS. So you have two ends of it. Where does Chip Kelly fall in that spectrum? Is he closer to a Romo where he's satisfied where he's at? Or is he closer to a Jay Cutler where, okay, give me a blank check and let's talk? So Chip Kelly, obviously a name we should monitor. A big ticket name for sure. Everybody knows who that guy is. So he falls in there at my number two. Finally, the number one coach who I have on my list to replace Butch Jones, Mr. John Gruden, TV analyst for ESPN as well. He's a fantastic color commentator for Monday Night Football. And, of course, a former NFL coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it's been a while, though, guys. It's been a while. It's been since 2008, the last time he actually coached a team. And, of course, it was those Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 2002 to 2008. Most notably, that Super Bowl back in the day when he won against the Oakland Raiders. Uh, a fantastic resume. The guy is an X's and O's genius. And if you want to look for something to cling on, if you're a Volunteers fan out there, he was a Tennessee graduate assistant back in the day, ended up marrying what was, or who was a uh, Tennessee cheerleader back in the day too, so he has that Tennessee volunteer blood in him, if you will, and you watch John Gruden on Monday Night Football, and in the Gruden QB camp, and the draft coverage as well, you see that energy, and I see it in his eyes. He has that look that I want to be a coach again, and I think that although it has been so long, He's just waiting for that prime opportunity to become one again. And Monday Night Football is going on tonight, Miami Dolphins, Carolina Panthers, folks. I want you to watch. Here's your homework for tonight on the Cam Rogers Show. Watch the game tonight and listen to John Gruden and the passion that he has. This is a Miami Dolphins, Carolina Panthers game that probably won't be all that exciting. It's probably going to be a 20 to 16 type of score. But at the same time, John Gruden is going to sound like he's having the time of his life talking about football. Now, whether or not that means he wants to stay with ESPN or if it means he wants to be a coach again, it's hard for me to say, uh, definitively at least. But I will say this. It sounds to me like he wants to return to the ranks of becoming a coach again. So there's your homework, especially when they do the cutaways to Sean McDonough and John Gruden in the broadcast booth. Look at the passion in John Gruden. It's there. You see it. And I think he wants to translate that to a head coaching position yet again. 
So obviously, most of John Gruden's resume falls in line with NFL teams, Buccaneers, Raiders, Eagles, Packers, etc. But still, this could be an opportunity that Gruden can't pass up. Uh, if Tennessee really pulls out all the stops to try to get him to be the head coach there, you know, there's possibly an opportunity for John Gruden to say, okay, I can't pass this up. All right, I'll take this job.